feeling retro. So the original manual that was actually provided with this TV set was for both the BioVision M20 and the MX2000 models. And that's because this range was launched as the M20 quite early in the 80s and then actually revamped later on in 1985 and sold until 1989 as the MX2000. We have the Type 3119 which was manufactured from 1985 to December 1988. And there were some key styling improvements on this model, mostly which was the contrast screen, which we will talk about a little bit later. And it was available in various colors, which made it even more attractive. The choice of color for the MX2000 was a matter of personal taste and style, and the choice was yours. There was a rich red for a home of color and striking contrast. There was an elegant white, there was a distinguished metallic grey, or like the model that we've got, was black. And it was a nice gloss finish as well. The MX2000 launched with a retail price of £559 in the UK in 1986. And with inflation, this is around £1,675 in today's money, and would buy you a Samsung 65 inch 8K smart TV today. So a high price for what people will have expected to have been a high spec TV at the time. And if we flick through the manual, you can see that the TV set has been built with a bit of a tapered back, not quite as blocky and bulky as you might expect. And they called this design at the back a pyramid design. And as we go closer, I'll tell you a bit more, which meant that it had tapered sides at the back, which wasn't quite as bulky as you would have expected on most other TVs, like the Sony Trinitron that we looked at the other week. It had the uh, quite a wide end edge, but then tapered in at the back to what was quite a narrow block. And Bannon Olsen said that the purpose behind that was that it gave the impression of lightness and extended freedom of positioning. And so now that all of a sudden the TV could be positioned anywhere in the room, in a corner or even in the middle of the room. But I'm not sure, I'm not quite getting the idea of the middle of the room, how about you? 25 kilos approximately, I believe. Luckily, it's got this nice handle at the top. And I must say, I really like this sound bar along the bottom here, which made the whole set much slimmer by placing the loudspeakers below the screen. And it broke the mold of other TVs at the time, actually, where the speakers were quite often placed on either side of the screen and therefore making the whole unit a few inches wider on either side. And after a quick look around on the glossy black finish around the screen here, you'd probably be forgiven for thinking that there were no operating buttons. However, as we actually lift the top lid of the TV set, we find a full panel of operating sliders and buttons for presetting picture and sound settings. And Bang & Olufsen actually suggests that if your tweaking of these settings raises any doubts over the picture quality and brilliance and colour, then the brilliance, colour and contrast should all just be set to 50. As they say that in doing so, you are certain to produce a natural picture. And once all of those buttons and sliders have been used, the key to this set is the remote control, or as Bang & Olufsen call it, the video terminal, which can pretty much completely operate this unit with the sensor that's in the bottom right-hand corner and the eye, as they call it, in the top right-hand side. A little bit dusty, and actually, there was the sliders here work brilliantly for bass and treble with the speakers below. The buttons are a little bit temperamental on this and the, the seller did warn me of that. As we change the volume, okay, volume's working quite nicely, up and down. All of those settings I had looked already, they were set to around about 50. Um, so the guy before me had obviously read that part of the manual as well. And <sighs> it's gonna be heavy again. But this set actually has a metal bracket beneath, which can be lifted and it gives it a slight tilt, it gives it a nice little backwards tilt. So I'll show you that from the front and the side now. 
not a very easy one man job, but here we go. So, you've got to lift, this is seriously heavy, and if I just, I can't see the screen here, give this a little lift, you should see here, there is the metal. So, let me give this a big heavy one handed lift. Woo. Okay. So we can see now, as we go closer, we've now got a little bit of a backwards tilt, and that's from the bracket. You can see here on the table where I've scuffed it before, trying to do the same. So, as we actually look back at the very first page of this manual, as Bang & Olufsen often do, they actually use it as a bit of an extra promotional tool. Just if you needed to be reminded that you had just spent the best part of 1500 quid on a TV set. They of course congratulate you on choosing a Behovision. We have allowed for the wide selection of exciting TV programmes of the future. And we have achieved perfection in terms of quality. I mean, of course, times have changed. But to claim at any point that you have achieved perfection, I think is a huge claim. So I started digging in a little bit and I wanted to find out exactly what gave the, you know, the confidence to make such a claim. And it turns out that the big claims were, and actually they still do justify these claims, by the introduction of what B&O called Vision Clear. The company still to this day uses and defines this concept as a list of advanced electronics, which the viewer experiences but hardly notices simply because they work. So I actually looked a bit closer at what that vision clear is, and it includes all sorts of features which Bang & Olufsen say create this superior or perfect experience. It includes things like dynamic luminous, luminance peaking, wideband CTI, black line, and automatic cut off control. So some of these technologies, in fact, were so good that B&O actually still uses them in their TV sets today, over 30 years on. Like inline black matrix picture tubes, which reduce the chance, apparently, of unintentional mixing of picture colours and ensures perfect pictures throughout the life of the set. And another feature, automatic cutoff, which is an electronic circuit that regulates colour balance 50 times a second. And they also have the contrast screen, which is an anti-reflection coating, which ensured the ambient light, which creates reflections, has to travel twice through a light absorbing contrast screen. Whereas the pictures formed in the picture only have to travel once. So that's supposed to look at reducing the glare. So overall, a few features that, well, B&O are claiming back then and still now, really did create the best overall experience.